Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and this is the fourth installment for my Digiplan series. There's one more video after this. I hope you stay tuned and I hope you're liking it. So what we're gonna do is make three different, completely different layouts in our OneNote. Just in OneNote. We don't need Silhouette, we don't need GIMP, we don't need any vectoring software, we don't need anything else but OneNote. Well, unless you're using a drawing pad like my Hunan Pro, then you're gonna need that. Okay, so open up Google and if you like, you can use a planner layout for reference. I did that here in Google and not very many of them came up the way I wanted them to, but you see this old Aaron Condren layout and then you can see some other blank layouts too. Those are good if you want them for reference, unless you have like a happy planner sitting around in your room, like most of us have happy planners and have Aaron Condren. So, you can also use those for references, even if you have a, um, what is it called? Inserts for bullet journals and uh, personal planners, like so much crafting inserts, those can use, be used for references. We can also create those here in our OneNote. So I'm using the grid background in my Bujo section of my February 2018 digital planner. And you don't have to use a background for this, but I do say if you're using shapes, it is easier to have the grid background because it actually lines up perfectly with the grid. And that's actually something that's really good to use in this OneNote because if you're off and you don't want to be off just in case you're creating equal shapes, it actually snaps you back into line, which is perfect. So first I'm creating the Happy Planner, Erin Condren, any vertical planner you have including the recollections. I'm creating that kind of layout in here as you see it now. So the first box I made is seven across and six down for the monthly section, if you're creating a monthly section, but I did so in this one. I'm also giving myself a two square width, vertical width, height for the seven heart checklist I'm making, and I'm gonna make two of those boxes. So I have seven boxes going down, and then I have two boxes on top just for the header, or just in case I wanted to draw in it myself. And then the last box I make on that side is going to be a really small, tiny habit tracker, weekly habit tracker, I suppose, that can fit in that section. So next I move over to Monday's boxes and it gets complicated from here on out, you guys, because I could have simply just left it as that without the header boxes, like the new Erin Condren's are. And then on top of that, when I did what I just did there, I could have just left that box that connected in between the two but I decided to be complicated and actually create header boxes which you know you don't have to do but if you're complicated like me you can so my boxes are seven across and then they're ten down I wanted to keep the width the same just in case I move stickers from my sticker kits around and the full boxes the really pretty deco full boxes need to fit the sidebar as well as the boxes of the weeks. So rule of thumb for this video is whenever you're creating shapes and you want them to stack perfectly, group them. Just right click on your mouse and select group in that drop down menu. It's easier to move your items and just in case you are moving them around, you don't want to move something from its intended place without the other item. I've done it before and I've done it to the point where I continued to edit and didn't realize that I moved a whole image or a whole box without the rest of it. It becomes, this is what happens when you're absorbed and you're in the moment and you just don't really watch what you're doing. But because this is making a layout, it doesn't have to be that serious. It's okay. Just take your time, feel the flow, and create. So also in this layout, I create the bottom box as you see right here. It's a like note section or maybe a run on just in case there's not enough space in your three boxes at the top. And then I edit that, squish them down a bit and basically it looks just like a layout from your Encondren or your Happy Planner. But for my last two planners, I didn't have headers in my boxes, I've gotten the ones without headers. And then my new Mambi planner is the monthly trendsetter happy girl planner. Happy planner girl, yeah, happy planner girl trendsetter. It's the cutest thing ever. 
so it's back in like a few videos of my setup and my review my openings of it oh it's also in my 2018 planner lineup video which is before my digital planning series so oh, it's like three four videos above so now that I'm done with this layout it is beautiful it's perfect it is ready for use I'm going to show you exactly how I can write in this you'll need a pen of some sort unless you like using your fingers you also can use that but if not you can use like a little touch capacitive touch little wands you get with your phones these days those can work too so I'm going to write in my month and then I'm going to create the Monday Tuesday Wednesday sections and color my headers I know my handwriting looks really bad but that's because I don't have very much practice writing with my Hunan Pro because I always I do my layouts and I put them together on my computer but then I write and I t plan out everything else on my tablet it's just so much easier that way so I recommend the Hunan Pro I don't have like a really advanced one I just have Hunan Pro I think it's T4610 I believe it's T4610 if not just try Hunan Pro 4610 and it'll pop up I bought mine for $46 so it was like uh, I didn't get it on Prime I believe or wait did I get it on Prime I think I got it on Prime yeah and tax was like a dollar something or I don't know tax was uh, maybe four dollars it was something but it's actually pretty cheap because there are more really really expensive one out there if you really want to shoot for Wacom my guess is to go get it because Wacom also comes with editing software which is great and at Michaels which they also sell the Wacom the small Wacom because Wacom comes in small medium and large I do say get it at Amazon because it's $99 at Michaels and no you can't use a coupon because it's in the exclusive exclusions at the bottom and the fine print on coupons and you can also use the coupons on like any of their heavy machinery so silhouettes cameos um, silhouette cameos and uh, crickets um, sewing machines all that good stuff printers and their typewriter you can't use a coupon on that they know what they're doing it's just a shame but actually it even never used to be like that until I believe maybe two or three years ago they didn't have that exclusion on the coupons not even the books we're on that exclusion either but now books are so you know they're waking up I guess realizing people are you know scoring at Michaels but it's cheaper on Amazon and if you can find it anywhere else that sells electronics cheaper be my guess it's better to save money than to spend the whole thing on it unless you got it as a gift to keep it so my next layout is going to be on a blank paper so you can also do this with grid if you'd like, it's up to you, but we're just going to be using a line. Just a simple line, no squares, no boxes, well we'll use boxes, but we're basically making a line. So this layout is basically a mock of the Annie Plan printables week, um, week on one page, but then the rest of the weeks are like grids, grid paper. And you can even do this in an hourly format, you know just make those lines closer and then put in your hourly which is my favorite format to use from Annie Plans Printables when I have when I used my pocket TN last year and then on the side we're gonna create a graph so I'm making six lines for Monday through Sunday and then I'll make the graph on the other side this isn't hard I feel like the first one was more tedious this one I got through pretty quickly but if you just use the line and then you stretch it out like I said they snap into place so it's not like you're having a hard time trying to figure out if these are lined up properly because one note is just that great to us So a thing for your grid box that you'll create on the side is that if you don't want it to have a box, you don't have to make it have a box. But for this one, it's usually easy to create the box first so you can create your grids on the inside. Or if you want to create your grids, you can just 
pull up the grid paper in OneNote and then just trace those lines by creating the actual lines on top of them using the ruler or using just creating the line, the free line. So the thing for me is that I can't create these layouts on my tablet particularly my tablet but I know people who have like Microsoft Surface who can create layouts and download additional stuff in their OneNote. For my Samsung Note Pro I can't create anything it only allows me to draw to erase to insert some pictures and that's it like I can't really do very much which is okay because by the time I start planning I should already have a full layout and like tons of stickers to be planning anyways and then I can always just do an all pen spread if that's really the case so as you can see this layout is completely editable all I have all about and all how you want to use it and you creating it so be free it doesn't even have to look like other layouts you see out there but you know play around with it because there are things like changing the colors of the lines then there's things like changing the background color of this the layout you're using so you're you're what we're gonna do next is make a blackout paper planning layout and that's pretty awesome because basically we do we change the background black and we use white ink it's pretty cool so you can do everything you want in OneNote so you want to recreate layouts of your favorite planner inserts or you see somebody's layout on Instagram and you're like yes I wish I had that layout I want to plan like you you can now you can you can digitally do so and on top of that this is really not that hard to create. Like I said earlier, I'm not so sure if I said it in this particular voiceover, but Silhouette's free, so you can download Silhouette if you want to, just go to silhouetteamerica.com, or you can also download GIMP, that's free too. And you can, if you get the Wacom tablet, that comes with editing software as well. That comes with the designing software too. So, but for now, all I know is about Silhouette. So download Silhouette and it doesn't matter which one you download whether it's Cameo or Portrait. I have a portrait so I can't wait to get the Portrait 2 that comes out. It's just something that I'm used to using. I've, I've dabbled in the Portrait in the Cameo 3. My sister has one but it's actually not my most favorite. I feel like it's a little bit more complicated because the portrait is so simple. Having a 12 by 12 sticker sheet is a lot more complicated to me but you know, everything's easy once you get to work around it and once you get to using it a lot more. So I do recommend that it's you want to print these out. You can always create your, your layout in Word as well if that's something up to you. But if not, you can create your layouts in Silhouette and print them out and set it up how you would print it duplex, which is double-sided, or if you're just going to turn the papers yourself because that's what I did when with my first ever printer in 2015. So I'm changing my lines to gray that way it's a little less harsh and a little bit more easy to like work with just in case I use black ink which I always use black ink it's my favorite and this is my mock any plans printable layout and it's pretty. So that's basically how I made a grid and then my week on one page. So I'm going to take you to our third layout, which is a blackout paper planning layout. You're going to need a blank screen, blank layout. You can use lines, you can use any kind of grid. It's up to you. So originally I was going to make another layout that required grid, but then I told myself, oh, I'm going to make a blackout paper planning layout because that's pretty cool. So my little advice is if you're not so sure about how you want to start out create box and then write your days of the week in the box so it's basically like having a paper so you can tell spacing and exactly where you want your days of the week to be so that's exactly what I did here and you can change the color of your lines like we did in the last layout but I decided to keep these gray even though it kind of does look a little bit white but then I changed my pen to white and don't forget to always change your pen density unless you're gonna press really hard throughout the whole thing. So I decided to use cursive and once again my my handwriting is so horrible and I'm so sorry you have to see it 
but I'm basically going to put four days of the week on this left page and on the right page I'm going to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the notes section. So this is the layout I show you how I use the ruler. It's really easy, but you know, considering that I know how to use my computer, maybe your computer might be different because for the longest I couldn't figure out how to spin my ruler around and didn't realize that I had to touch it. I thought most things would, you know, go for um, mouse first before capacitive touch, but I apparently had to put my hand on it and turn it like I do on a phone. So at least that works on my tablet too. Now you can use whatever font, whatever layout you want. But what I also wanted to mention is that if this is what you do and you don't like, you don't know what else, like you don't want to use your handwriting, you can also just type it in. But you can also download handwritten, like handwritten to do today work and all that, like handwritten letters. Yes, handwritten letters. Handwritten words. Yes, letters work too, but words is what I mean. So Monday through Sunday, you can download those and you can make them in silhouette if you want, but you can just download them and paste them in here and then just stick them on there if you download them in white font. So it's really easy, you guys. But also you can download fonts from thehungryjpeg.com for free and there are some that you can pay for. You can download a lot of fonts like from thefont.com, so D-A-F-O-N-T. And they have tons of fonts, cursive and really crazy looking ones, you know, shapes of characters and seasonal ones. So you can download that and you can basically put it in your OneNote and stick them where you want to. So I hope you enjoyed this video and have a nice day. Stay tuned for the last one next week.